And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube. For our last Rank Up Sunday deck, we got some Aphelios Heimer. We're going to be playing uh, the newest, best champion in the game, Aphelios, with another very underrated champion with Heimer Dinger. We just played it with Lux before and our deck looked incredible. Only lost the one game with us having a really, really poor draw. Um, we're going to try another another version, though. Um, you know, a lot of people play like Aphelios Victor, but I think that Heimerdinger is just a, a much, much stronger card than Victor. Victor is really cool. I like Victor, but, you know, Heimerdinger is just on a different level. So I think that this should work out pretty well. We got a low curve, lots of uh, ones, twos, and threes. Looks like we got plenty of threes in this deck. Um, Flash of Brilliance is a card that I think could work really well with, with like Aphelios and the Veiled Temple. Right? Like, we're going to want to be playing two cards each turn it to be um to be getting extra mana with the veil temple um and so like flash of brilliance should be able to help that and obviously flash of brilliance with heimerdinger is very good um aftershock is a card that i think is just amazing right now i think that this is a card that people aren't playing enough of you know gets around nopify it kills like basically all the champions that you need to kill besides lee sin you know if you think about like uh zoe aphelios twisted fate um, and, uh, Ezreal, Draven kills those, you know, if, if you run into like people still playing like Misfortune or Callista or things like that, it gets, gets rid of those. Or if people start playing Heimerdinger like this, gets rid of Heimerdinger, just all sorts of stuff. And then like the landmarks, you know, if you do play against Grand Plaza, but also Veil Temple is becoming pretty popular because of how good it is with the Philios. So it can get rid of Veil Temple also. Really like Aftershocks. We're going with all three copies of that. Uh, the the pro the biggest the biggest downside here, or just like the reason the reason why I I like uh, okay the the thing that's kind of a problem is that our two ma too many units aren't really that great. Like Sh Shade Stalker is kind of whatever. Mountain Goat is Mountain Goat's good on turn two, create a gem, all that kind of stuff, but it's not really like that amazing. Like neither of these are, are like that amazing. Uh, as far as like Aphelios with the Crescendum, that's like like this card is, is something that makes Aphelios amazing, being able to tutor stuff. And we saw that like when we played Twisted Fate with Aphelios and we had Bilgewater, we were able to get Boxtopus, which is a three four challenger, which was insane. Um, then whenever we played the Lux version a little bit ago, we got like the Egghead Researcher that got us dragons, which was awesome. Um, or we could get the Mage Seeker Persuader, which which sometimes is like a four three challenger. You know, like so we had we had really good quality options in the like with those other regions. A lot of people play Aphelios with Ionia right now to be able to get the um the Eye of the Dragon. Again, very good option. These are just kinda average, right? Like they're not gonna like win games like those other cards can. Um but there's they're just not like anything special in these regions. You know, like we could get like ballistic bot, but we're really not a ballistic bot deck. Um, so, you know, like we're just going with a couple of mountain goats, a couple of Lunari shade stalkers. Um, but yeah, this is, this is another one that was difficult to build tons and tons of good cards that I'd like to play that we just don't really have, you know, don't have room for everything, but we're going to try, uh, we're going to try these out here. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's play some games with, um, Aphelios Heimer and we'll see how it does. Looks like a pretty decent hand against Ezreal Draven. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to keep all this. It's not perfect. It's not Lunari Duskbringer into Aphelios perfect. But we can do a lot worse. I really like the, the Sunblessed Vigor. I think it can... Um, I think it can, you know, help against some of these damage base spells that they got going on. And there we got two aftershocks that kills the champions. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. We don't really need another removal spell right now. The world's a big place. Let's see all of them. Ooh. 
Getting rid of rummage. Serpent. The serpent's cool with this gem. Make it, we can make it a 3 1 challenger, which, you know, better against the champions, better against this sump dredger. Down to just three cards. We still have plenty. Don't blink or you'll miss me. Nope, I'll never miss you. You can just keep going away. No way. Alright, so two Ezreal's down. Alright, so Falling Comet, I guess I, okay, alright, so like these two, it's, this is a difficult choice. So I'd rather have Golden Sister with, you know, the life steal and everything, the two bodies, you know, like it's, it's really good. But the Falling Comet could be necessary, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to take the Falling Comet, because it could be really necessary if they do have uh, the 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight up next. Um, I'll just go the Messenger. Let my stars guide all travelers onward. Not a very good traveler. Yeah, Captain Farron. Yeah, that one. That that one we may need this. Um may need this falling comet. Trust your heart. Taking it. All right, all three of these are, are good options. Um, these are yeah, these are all good options. The Immortal Fire is like a card that you know, helps end the game faster. I do have these star shapings. Um, are they gonna Ravenous Flock my three four? If so, we'll we'll save the three four with the Sun Plus bigger if they do Ravenous Flock it. Playing the flock. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dreadway, everything does double damage. Oh, my gosh. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I guess we we'll just get another doggo. Yeah. And here's where I beat my constellation. We 
girl barking about? Okay, so that trades there. That trades there. And then... If I... You know, like, both of these will kill a mortal fire. Like, this is a 6-2 and an 8-6. Like, I'm, I'm blocking both of them. It's just, do I... Yeah, I guess I guess we trade away the, the first immortal fire. We gotta get the damage in on these things. And you're like, they have, they have one card. I have all this stuff. Please don't play Captain Farron. Please do not play Captain Farron. Okay, doing that while that still does four damage. Please do not play Captain Farron. Okay, good. They do not play Captain Farron. All right. So we should have this from here. Oh yeah, got Felios now. Right. <laughs> I forgot about the Nightfall part of that card. I should have played the Flash of Brilliance first. My bad. Um, block, block. We're, st we're still going to be just fine. Okay, so it just gives us a random one. The Destroyer. Alright, let's go Overwhelm and 3 damage. Let's take out a blocker. All right, gotta remember that nightfall on that Aphelios. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can stop. So like they're gonna they're gonna be just trying like their whole overwhelm thing, right? Um, like Heimer plus Flash of Brilliance is awesome, but will it stop? Like if they have like their really aggressive hand, I'm gonna just keep this because it's just like this is what our deck's about. But if they have like their best hand, we probably aren't beating it. All right, so I like that we have uh, removal for Draven on three. In hot. Probably need to discard this Bastion. Sorry, Bastion. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. You would look better as a four-one overwhelm, to be honest. Well, I can block that thing. No Draven, no Riven. Wow, no Draven, no Riven. These hands, no metal and magic. I can block these things. To serve the greater good. <laughs> They're all about the greater good. Hey, unhelpful Yoda. Happy Sunday. It's my time. Hold still. All right, so we'll deal three, but then we'll just gain the three back. So this was this is actually their worst order, right? Because they they should do it the other way. As for as far as the order is concerned. Okay. Whatever. What seems to be the problem? 
Yeah. <laughs> Their hand was pretty bad. Then we we're just gonna flash a brilliance, and yeah, like it, we we're taking over from there. Calculated. Okay, Freljord Shadow Isles. All right, so what are we gonna do against the Nivea? We're gonna mulligan that, mulligan this, and keep these two. I, we can mulligan the fangs. We don't need the fangs. There we go. These are. This is the core of our deck. Aphelios, Heimerdinger, Veiled Temple. That's what our deck's all about. We can see the Nebastian border from here. I don't have any amazing two drops to grab, though, with this deck. You cannot hold us down. It's a better use of my 2-1 and just getting that thing out of here than, um, you know, than allowing them to uh, just play like Wither and Whale. The brighter my light, the stronger your shadow. Or that thing like Vile Feast. The next turn's gonna be interesting. You know, like it's it's always good to get the Veil Temple in play. But if I want to go like Heimer into Flash of Brilliance, then I don't want to play the Veil Temple. But will playing like Heimer into Flash of Brilliance will that open me up to Ruination too much? I think I can wait on Veil Temple. Three one is fearsome. Whatever the cost. Order, entropy, a never ending cycle. I mean, so I, I want to sunburst this thing. They, the egg goes away, but it, you know, it does mean that, like, Rekindler is turned on. Uh, you know, Rekindler, like, those kind of cards are turned on. And Yeah, I, I guess I still just do it, though. Like, my other, my only other option is just to simply hush the card. Time to reflect. My most groundbreaking invention to date! <laughs> Alright, so Vill Temple will give me six mana. Forgive me. Ruination is like, you know, the card that I'm worried about here, which I I guess I would progress day. Okay, so no ruination. We burn. Then kindle a new. Well they do have that card. I can't double shoot this Anivia right now. Yeah, Rekindler being turned on is always really annoying. Definitely. Dimensions don't determine themselves. So I'm doing this to level up Heimer. Now Heimer will start making two health turrets. Ooh. 
Must we fight? This definitely feels like ruination. Pretty good. Oh wait, they can't cast Ruination. They have eight mana. Well, it's not gonna be Aphelios. Or sorry, it's not, not gonna be Ruination. I can't talk. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play this D Hex. It's Avalanche. Effectively Ruination. Basically the same thing. As darkness falls, the moon rises. All right, gonna kill their thing, their blocker. See as I see. Don't need these bodies, of course. I'm just I'm playing that. Get another stun. Or I guess we get we get this stun thing anyway. But <clears throat> I thought that was a good place to play that. See what we got. Okay. Here we go. That'll do. Could have technically just got rid of, you know, I could have kept that 1 1, I guess, and just got rid of the Veiled Temple with that open attack, but it's just a 1 1. Okay. <clears throat> Riven Lee Sin. So it should be, again, trying to make a, you know, one turn kill, overwhelm attack, that kind of thing. Those can all go. Do I want to keep this Veiled Temple? I'll send it back, where we look for Aphelios and Heimer and removal spells. I write the rules of power. Words of power linger in the air. Come on, obliterate! Obliterate! No, no obliterate card. All right, so I'm going to grab Written in Stars, hoping to kill, a, or like hoping to grab an Aphelios. I wanted the Obliterate to kill Elisa. We didn't get that. Damage, put me down to twelve. Answers. I have them. My time. All right, sorry, Heimer. Play Lisa and don't do it, don't do it. Break the ties that bind. Okay, good. One star's whoopsie is another spark. I was hoping for the, the challenger. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to challenge.
Get him, bot. Scary calling strike. <laughs> I'm just going to try this before this ribbon gets buffed up and everything with all these, all their pump spells. Ah, they had a weapon health. This is why I wanted to try to <laughs> get. This is why I tried. Make these pieces whole. The conflict awaits. At least they're not playing the Blade of the Exiles, which would have been another 40 damage. Oh, Priestess? Okay. Cause, so, like, this probably grabs Aphelios. So I get this, play Aphelios. I have one, two, three, four, five mana. Double spell, because I can start going towards the stun. But I think this, like, looking for the Obliterate. Yeah, I wanted to go this. Let's go this route. I saved the Shade Stalker to be able to help beat another spell. As the dragon wins. Not good. Obviously, that thing has to go. I know my purpose. Ooh, that's new. It must be done. Wow. This is a surprising block. Behold another celestial card right now. Oh wait, yes I do. I have this written stars. I was I don't know why I was thinking that I was gonna be playing that written stars. Okay, they didn't have double attack. They didn't have the double attack card. So we're still alive for a little bit. Just a little bit. Still alive for just a little bit. 10, 11, 12, 13. Four. Okay, yeah, we're good. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to play this. Get the lifesteal one. Nope, bye. Alright. Come on, play another Lee Sin. Nah, I didn't play a Lee Sin. Okay, so that still count. I didn't think that that was going to count. I guess I could I could have actually looked at the card. I figured since it was stopped that it wasn't going to count. So I could have had the life steal this turn. For truth.
GG's. Ugh. Giving good. No turning back now. Well, I wish that calling strike would have worked. That we would have grabbed with the Heimer a long time ago. Okay, Aphelios, Twisted Fate. So we got the Aphelios Mirror. They're going to have the better two drop. I assume that they are playing like, you know, kind of like the deck that I played yesterday, and they, they have Box to put that too. If they do. Let's see. Yeah, let's get rid of both those. Yeah, assuming they have Box to put that too. That can be good, because that's, I think, that's like the big reason to play Bilgewater for the Aphelios Mirror. Is being able to have a three-four challenger that your, you know, like your uh, your card goes goes and grabs a three-four challenger that can kill the other Aphelios. Hello. They forced us to choose death or life. No more hiding. Okay, good looking star for them. Really good quality Aftershock draw, so if they do have a Aphelios next turn, I can kill it with the Aftershock. And looks like that's what they got. So now they get Boxtopus. I'm still good yep. to scrap. It's pretty awesome. Should have stayed home, pal. I really wanted the deal four, deal one. Maybe I take the warrior. Falling combat is just so expensive as far as like getting rid of like these cards go. Um, but being six mana, I guess I still grab it. it. Does give me a six one turret if we would have Heimerdinger in play. Yeah, and they can they can Equinox Warrior. That's kind of the problem with Warrior here is Equinox, and then and yeah, the different stun cards they could have that too. Gravity stun card. I really want deal four, deal one. Because not only do these things have one health, but then also um, the other the other reason to play Bilgewater besides this is is playing the zero mana three one. Um, Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. All right, so go Flash, Aphelios. No, I guess I just don't, there's no real reason to play Aphelios. And no real reason to play this stuff pre-combat. Because like if, if I played both these burn spells pre-combat, and then they could just play like another Twisted Fate. That's what could have just happened. That is nice. Proud warriors of the sun's true light. That is pretty nice. A wind stream. So they still have five things out to my zero, and they're doing the crying face. Yes, yes, again. 
stack in the art. Alright, this should be game over with now leveled up Twisted Fate. <laughs> I guess you should be game over. Me. Awesome hand. Awesome hand for them. They had the the perfect have the you know, like it's it's the same thing that we did yesterday whenever we played the Twisted Aphelios. If you have you have the attack token on turn one and three, play Dustbringer on one, then on turn three play Aphelios plus Boxtopus. That's amazing. It's a, such a great start. But then, then you know, they got to um, really carry that up with having the turn four Twisted Fate. Kill my thing. Turn five, triple Solari Soldier, plus heal the Boxtopus. All that on turn five. Just perfect first five turns. Progress and then turn six wasn't bad either. Spray Fin plus pick a card to level up Twisted Fate. <laughs> I think that's the, 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 poss the best possible first six turns. So yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. No system is truly error free. So we got out Aphelios. They played Aphelios. I did not. They had the uh, Duskbringer to go along, you know, so so they could play the Aphelios on turn three and, and then get their two drop, and their two drop was better than ours. Also, um, so yeah, it's <laughs> it kind of is. You you play Aphelios, you have a really really high chance of winning. They had Aphelios, we didn't. Um, so they got us there. All right, but that's that's Aphelios Heimer. I think that this deck again, still very very strong. It you know it does have Aphelios and, and everything. Um, you know like if whenever you play Aphelios and your opponent doesn't, you feel very good about your chances of winning. As far as like which version was better, this one or the Lux? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I liked. I liked a lot of the stuff that that Lux deck had. Um, really, I liked the two drops. I think that I think that's a really important thing of with Aphelios is having an amazing, amazing two drop. And I think that um, I think Boxtopus in the entire game, Boxtopus is the best two drop um, for Aphelios in the entire game. But then after that, um, you know, you have like Eye of the Dragon is a good one. But then the Demacia ones are both very good. These ones are just are very mediocre. They're not bad, but they're very mediocre. They're they're not special like those like Boxtopus is special. But Heimerdinger, always awesome, and it can get you like all those turrets and, and do some really crazy stuff. Um, you know, Lux gets you the the final sparks and everything. The great part about playing PNZ is you get aftershock. That uh, aftershock was awesome. Um, but yeah, that's that's Aphelios Heimer. So those are those are kind of my my. Uh, favorite Aphelios decks right now are, are you know, like this, like with Heimer. I think the four best champions to go along with Aphelios are Heimer, Lux, Twist, Twisted Fate for, like, Bilgewater, or just Zoe. Like, Zoe, like, Aphelios Zoe decks are probably maybe the best. Like, you know, Zoe's just amazing. And you, you can put Zoe in any of the region combinations. So maybe going, like, you know, I just didn't want to do Aphelios Zoe today, but I, I feel like that, that Bilgewater version with, um... Aphelios and Zoe. Let's see. Where's my Twisted Aphelios? Because it's, it's possible this deck's better with Zoe instead of Twisted Fate. But then, you know, the same kind of deck where you play... Basically, you just have Bilgewater for Boxtopus and Burblefish. And, you know, you can play Sprayfin. You don't need to play Sprayfin. Um, but those are, like, the two main cards, I think, to play with uh, Bilgewater, Burblefish, and Boxtopus. And then, you know, you can kind of go from there. And, you know, basically, you know, you have, like, the Zoe instead of this flight and, you know, play, uh, you know, the other one drop that goes along with Zoe, the Spacey Sketcher. You can do all that kind of stuff. But lots of great stuff you can do with the card, Aphelios. Um, it'll, it's going to be a while. It's going to be around for a while. You know, you're going to start seeing more and more and more Aphelios decks. Uh, we're still, it's, it's the kind of champion that goes everywhere. And I think more people are just experimenting, putting it with a lot of different stuff. As you saw today, we experimented with putting it with both Heimerdinger and Lux, and it looks great. And so I think you're going to really see that as you as you uh, play more in ranked, as you're going to see more people experiment with it. And um, that's a that's a, also a spot where if you are playing right now, if you're playing a lot of ranked, you can get ahead of your opponents. If you can find an Aphelio deck that you really like, that um, you know is low, low to the ground, can stop the aggro decks. 
and uh, you know can can beat other Aphelios decks in the late game. You know, you find you find that combination, you're going to be winning a lot of games. All right, so there we go. That's uh, that's it though for Aphelios Hammer here. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, uh, leave those comments. Let me know what you're doing with the card. Um, always love uh, hearing that. Let me know what you think about this Heimerdinger version um, and uh, anything else. Would love to see those comments. But that's it here for Aphelios Heimer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.